You know, we've been raised with cliches like love makes the world go round. <clears throat> but the deeper we go into the metaphysics, we find out that it's fear and guilt that spin this world. It's not uh, so romantic as love makes the world go round. It's actually fear and guilt. And instead of trying to find happiness in the world, we, we realize we have to go inside, go within us to find it. Uh, we find that that's where the love is and through forgiveness. Um, this world is backwards and upside down. And so, you know, fear and guilt are magnified in this world and, and random acts of kindness, you know, you don't ever see them on the news. Uh, in Dark City, they kind of just scrape away the top layer of the world. It's a dark world. Uh, if you took all the ice cream away, uh, if you took a lot of the, the glitz and glamour and the ooh la la and you kind of stripped it bare, uh, it would be a pretty dark world. Sleep, uh, the inhabitants all are put to sleep, much like if you look at the human race, you know, and uh, we'll say six, seven, eight hours of sleep every night, and the dreaming, you know, it's like uh, there's a lot of aspects that are very parallel to this world. Uh, there's a lot of use of the symbols of spirals, and Jesus actually talked to Helen Schuckman at one point, he didn't put it in his course, but he said time is like a spiral. Uh, that, you know, you descend uh, down into a spiral, and when you get close enough to the line, you can see the continuity. But when you step back from it, it looks like segments, like, like it would if you were looking at a spiral from the side. But if you get close enough to it from the right perspective, you can see the continuity of it. That it's not broken at all. The ego breaks everything up into, you know, minutes and seconds and days and weeks and years and decades and centuries and millennium and so forth, but that segmenting factor is just part of the ego's misperception. Um, it's very much about memories. So, you know, we have concepts in this world called reincarnation where it seems like you incarnate and reincarnate and it's a different person with different life circumstances, different memories and so forth. Um, in this movie, it's more like the, the dark ones are, are using, or purposefully using these false memories and mixing them around among the inhabitants to make everybody confused about their identity. So everybody thinks that there's something that they're not. Pretty similar to the world, the ego making up all these false memories, and then people arguing and debating about their, what's true, what do you believe, what do you believe, and everybody has these memories. Um, basically, this is an upside-down world in this movie, and the mind always has the power to, to forgive or to have everything healed, which in one sense is like, this world is dark because it's turned away from the light. It's like the back of my hand over here is the, the shadow side, and it would be like living over on the shadow side. And then when you can invert your mind from upside down to right side up, then everything that was in darkness is fully brought into the light. And it's a whole new world. I mean, the, the same world is just perceived completely different when it's bathed in light. So the first time when I saw this movie, it was pretty dark all the way through, but of course the ending is, is the forgiven world. It's actually taking it all the way through to turning the world right side up back toward the light, instead of away from the light. So, um, it was spectacular. I remember just sitting in this theater for close to two hours with all this darkness, and all of a sudden, the light was almost blinding, it was so beautiful. At the end of the movie, it's just really spectacular. Um, another thing is, is the, there's one of the main characters who's an inspector, and he's trying to use the typical analytical ways that that sleuths and detectives in this world try to figure out what's happening. Like a crime, there's a crime and people investigate to try to find out who was the perpetrator and so forth. Of course, that doesn't get into the mind or metaphysics, and so there's really no answer. You know, when we try to find who committed the crime, it's just uh, verifying the belief in victimization. That some people steal and murder and so forth, and some people are victims. And then that just keeps the guilt recycle and going on and on. There's one inspector in here though that, that seems to be going crazy because 
he's investigated so deeply that he's realized that there's no way out, that, that there's no way to escape this world. And Jesus talks about this in his course where he says, you know, men have died upon seeing that all of the roadways of the world uh, lead to death. But if they had taken the next step, their learning could have led to heights of happiness. In other words, forgiveness is the lesson that your mind can rest once it realizes that there's no hope of finding it in form. Then you're turned inward to your mind where the kingdom of heaven is and then it's blazing light. And, and that's the sooner the better. Uh, otherwise you're just kind of going around in distractions. So, um, that's another aspect of this movie. And I think it's really a good movie just as a mind watcher. Uh, people tend to talk about violent movies. This, this probably would be classified as a violent movie, a uh, psychologically violent movie. Although, I always tell people that, that violence is in the mind. And so, it's the judgments and the opinions that you hold on to that is the violence. And then the ego even projects that out as if we have violent movies. So it seems like the murder and, and the torture and all these kind of things are, are happening in the world when it's really the ego belief itself is the murder and the torture. And it's just disguised itself. So it seems like there's things that are violent and non-violent. But really forgiveness and peace of mind is non-violence. And judgment uh, is, is what the violence is. So, this is a good mind watcher movie, aside from having really great metaphysics and, and, and having a lot of insights into, into the, how to escape from the world by facing the ego and, and pulling your mind away from it. Uh, this movie has, you might say, dark ones. Uh, Jesus talks about in his Course in Miracles, attack thoughts. I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. Well, these attack thoughts are dressed up in long black uh, gowns almost and they kind of float through the sky <laughs> and and they're really single-minded they're, they're just into death destruction and sleep they're always going up to the inhabitants and kind of putting their hand over their face going sleep <laughs> and that's basically if the ego is acted out in your life that's what it wants you to do is sleep sleep kind of like cover your your face and all of the venge, vengeance, murder, it's always trying to interpret everything from its point of view. It's quite single-minded. That's why you can't really make friends with the ego, because you can't really make friends with the death wish. Uh, you can just expose it and release it, but you can't ever like to befriend it, because it, it literally wants you dead, it wants your mind to be caught up in guilt forever in its own terms, you know, Im immortal guilt <laughs> would be something that the ego would, would sponsor, even though it doesn't know what Im immortality is. Uh, the other thing is, um, the, the, the one who starts to wake up in this movie is, you might say he's kind of got uh, psychokinesis powers, you know, he, he has the ability to manifest. So we're back to that manifesting idea. And here's one, they call it tuning. When you can manipulate form with the power of the mind, then you can tune. Uh, why is that important? Um, in in oh, spiritual terms, when people can seem to, to uh, manifest things like Sai Baba with uh, race bracelets or jewelry, uh, or people can seem to bend spoons, uh, or do things like that, you know, that's just a sign of the power of the mind. Even though it's kind of a small little sign, bending a spoon, considering that the mind is capable of make, making up a whole cosmos uh, when the ego is there. Bending a spoon is not uh, such a big deal. But for human beings, it seems like a big deal. Uh, some of you might have saw the movie Powder, uh, where he starts having spoons dance on a table, and these bullies are just absolutely terrified. Their mouths drop when these spoons start dancing around and he's using some of his uh, psychokinesis power. In this movie, uh, the main character starts to realize that he has these powers to tune, as they say, to manipulate uh, the physical form with the mind. 